we will always have someone that wants to get you to believe that you ought to be, you should be rich. You should have all these blessings. You shouldn't struggle. You shouldn't go through anything. God doesn't want his people to struggle. The problem with that is that's just not what we see in the Bible. We see even the people that he chooses to use as apostles, even prophets, oftentimes they struggle. As a matter of fact, look at their death. And so to think that we're going to go through life without having any problems, any interruptions, any struggles, that is a bad thing. As a matter of fact, Paul's the one that says, they says for our momentary and light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. And so while we look not at the things which, which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. His point is what's happening now isn't the important thing. And he wants us to have that in mind. But there are certain people, some people like a John Hanna, who would tell you that, no, God doesn't want you to struggle. God wants you to be blessed. And he is going to, I guess, in a sense, prophesy that, uh, decree that over your life. Be careful when you hear these kind of things, because it can cause you to be defeated when what he's saying that you ought to have, you don't have. It'll cause you to wonder, one, is God for real? Uh, is there something wrong with you? So there's a danger to this particular kind of message. Look at me. You're not... You're not dying under this. You're not going to let pressure kill you. You cannot tell me that your God is not able to deliver you from this. And it's not to say that God is not able to deliver anyone from anything, but the issue is not that he's able, but will he? There are times where he just simply will not deliver people from certain things, from a health condition, from a financial condition, from a lot of different things. Sometimes you might die in a in a state that you don't want to be in, but that doesn't mean that God is not able. Look, I've been saying this. Y'all do a whole lot of faith talking, but believe like an atheist. You talk like a believer, but you believe like an atheist. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all to say that someone who is uh, talking about faith, but may, not necessarily, but may not necessarily believe that God is going to pull them out of the situation. That's not the belief of an atheist. As a matter of fact, what it does, what it may speak of is someone's contentment. As a matter of fact, let's just go to Paul. Paul makes this statement. He says, not that I, this is Philippians 4, 11, not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. So either or, and in every, and in, in any, in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so his point is, whatever I'm going through, I've got the strength to make it through. God has strengthened me, whatever it is I'm going through. By the way, this is one of the more misquoted and most, most misused passages. He didn't say that I have to, that I can do all things, meaning that through Christ I can become all these different things. No, his point is whatever I'm going through, even in suffering, which tells us you will have suffering, that tells us that you will have times where you won't have abundance. There are times where some people might have abundance and prosperity, and there are times where people won't have any of those things. But whatever situation you're in, you will be able to go through because Christ is with you. But whatever it is, he says to be content. That is not the thought pattern of an atheist. That's the thought pattern of someone who has complete faith in God. You cannot tell me that we are the soul of the earth. Here goes somebody, you're preaching a prosperity gospel. No, I'm preaching an Exodus gospel. That sounds good. Sounds really good. I'm preaching an Exodus gospel, not a prosperity gospel. Well, first of all, you are. You're preaching a gospel where you want people to believe that they can have something, that they can come out of whatever it is they're in. And so you call it an Exodus gospel. Nice title that you put on it, but it's false. It's not true. There are some things that you are going to be in that you will not come out. Ask Paul. Paul died in prison. Paul lost his head. Same with Peter. Uh, they died horrible deaths. Same with the other apostles. Many people in the Bible died with their infirmities or a certain condition, just like we've got a lot of believers who died, who have faith in the Lord, but their faith isn't predicated upon having things. Their faith is predicated upon having Christ. The issue is, just like with, with the disciples in the boat, not that, that Jesus would necessarily stop the storm, 
but the fact that Jesus is in the boat. That's the more important thing. Look at me. You cannot struggle your whole life. It's not his will. Says who? Says who? Who says that you cannot struggle your whole life? Says who? It's not his will. And some of y'all keep running to people, asking them to help you, and they keep shutting you down and sending you back to your house for you to do what God tell you to do. Hear the word of the Lord. Lift your hands. Now, this is where it's going to be a problem because you're going to say, hear the word of the Lord as though God is telling him to do this. Remember when Job was struggling? Job makes a statement now. He was having a hard time kind of internalize this. But he makes a statement. He says that to his wife, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. He says, shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. In other words, sometimes the adversity comes from the adversity comes from God. Sometimes that's the case. And if that's the case, now what are you saying? Are we going to preach against what God is doing in us? And there's a reason for sometimes these adversities to grow us. In the last six months of the year, I am giving you insight, information, and instructions to use what you already have. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to enlarge your territory. Yeah, so what you need to do is throw some throw some tongues in there. Don't interpret them. False tongues is what we see. But then also he says that I, I, John Hanna, this pastor, I am going to enlarge your territory. Hmm. You should take that trick on the road. You should take that show on the road to other places and tell them the same thing. And I promise you're going to have lines out the door. Uh, stadiums will be packed from people wanting to hear you telling them that you are going to hear the word of the Lord, speak some tongues, and then I'm going to enlarge your territory. Who doesn't want to hear that? Who doesn't want to hear that God is going to bless them? Meaning uh, that, well, while he's while you're waiting for your blessing, make sure that you sow a seed into this ministry. Make sure that you give because I want to be the example before you how God has blessed me with your money all the while teaching you that you should give so that you can be rich. Remember what, 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 the, what the word says. Uh, Paul says to, Tim, to Titus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Timothy, uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 9, he says, but that those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge men and women <laughs> into ruin and destruction. So that's the route that you're heading if you're going to follow this. You only are asked to do what you already do. You're only asked to give what you already have. I need you to remain in the seat of expectation and know that I am about to come through for you. Those of y'all that believe that he could flip your situation, lift your hands and release your worship right here. So I can believe that God can, but that he will. What does that do if God doesn't flip the situation? What does it do to the person's faith if they've really been holding out hope that God, they've listened to you and other prosperity preachers, they've listened to you, held out hope, and it doesn't happen? Then what? That can affect someone's faith. And so I say shame on anyone, any preacher that would do something like that, that would cause harm to someone's faith. Well, you just got to keep believing. You got to keep holding out. You got to keep trusting in the Lord. So for 40 years, 30 years, 20 hour long, 10 years, it doesn't happen. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that you ought to listen to. Those who are going through things, have gone through things. Their situation hadn't changed, but they still love the Lord. Their joy is still there. That's the kind of person that you want to follow. That's the kind of person that you want to listen to because that person's joy, that person's love, that person's excitement is not dependent upon their bank account or how God has blessed them financially or materially. But their joy is based on how God has blessed them spiritually. And they have all that they could ever want and all that they could ever need. They might have some. Sure, who wouldn't like to have a bigger house or nicer things? But when you pursue those things, as a matter of fact, if you think that God wants you to pursue those things, then you might find uh, ill-gotten uh, gain. You might find, uh, find it through illegal means. You might find it through all sorts of things by you compromising your walk. Now, God doesn't want you to be rich in things. He wants you to be rich in mercy and rich in his word. And so when you hear a John Hanna or anyone like that said that, you need to turn away from that and just let your blessings that you feel that you're being blessed in, let it be because of the word and the salvation that you have. Um, because I don't care what you say, 
however rich you are, however, however much you have, if you don't have Christ and you go to hell, you really didn't have much at all to begin with. Amen.